All right, what's up, people? This is Sif Urian, and right now we are back. Another week of Vikings. We're on episode 17, season 5. Super quick recap because I really want to get into this. So, Athelred is dead. Athelred is dead. Killed by his own mother. Like, it's so fucked up. It's really fucked up. Like, Judith, like, many people keep commenting, well, of course, like, she loves Alfred more because she loved Athelstan. She never really loved Athelwolf and... Yes, but that shouldn't change a mother's love for her children. You know what I mean? She brought both of them children into the world. She raised both of them. You know what I mean? Just because she loved the father of one and not the other doesn't mean that she's going to love the children any different, as far as I'm concerned. You know what I mean? Your children are your children. I think for her to do that, for her to literally pick favourites, for her to um, always consider Athelred a threat... Nah, man, that's just stupid to me. It's absolutely stupid. At least, like, just have him arrested and have him locked up. Wait for Alfred to wake up and make his mind up on what to do. Because he is king, after all. Um, and then you've also got Bjorn as well. He's approached Howard Finehair um, with the intentions of going back to Kataka and, and taking it from Ivor. Oh, and we also have a like possible new love interest with Bjorn and Gunhild. I believe her name is Gunhild. Funny thing about that, right? I was trying to find her name, like, last week, thinking, like, of course, like, if she's going to be, like, a main kind of regular, I need to kind of get used to her name. And she actually has the same name, Gunhild, is the same name that King Horwick's wife had. Just a quick little bit for you. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, it looks like Bjorn has a bit of a thing for her. Um, I think he's really intrigued because she's, like, such a, a strong, beastie character. A little bit like his mum, so that might be a very kind of appeal. Even though Lagerfeld is kind of short, like this, <laughs> this gun heel seems to be a pretty beastly woman. But there's also the issue that Howard Finehair has a thing for her as well. You know what I mean? Um, so, is he going to betray Bjorn over a woman? I think Howard Finehair is smarter than that. I think he knows that like Bjorn will help in the attack on Katakat. But ultimately, I think he might try and shit on him. But then it also depends on Gunhill herself. Like, like, who does she want to be with? There's the appeal of, of being with the mighty Bjorn Ironside, a famous Viking. Or being with a famous Viking and possibly king of all Norway. You know what I mean? Like, she could be the queen of all of Norway. You know what I mean? So, yeah, we got to see how it plays out with her. Oh, and um, Floki's storyline, right? The, um, that one kid, he turned up saying that him and his family are really struggling um, and, and they need help and if Floki and, and Flatnose and everyone can come back and help them and stuff. And ultimately, Floki gave Flatnose the choice, like, do you want them to come back into our little uh, group? And Flatnose said, well, if they've changed, then, you know, we've got to have peace. And Oh, other quick thing, right? The new news that season six is going to be the final ever season of Vikings. Um, technically we will have 10 episodes at the end of this year and then 10 episodes end of next year so we've got two more years worth of Vikings everyone keeps posting on Twitter their feelings about it and stuff me like of course I'm sad that it's coming to an end I really really am I love this show with a passion I really do but at the same time it's I think if if Ragnar was still in the show, I think I, I would just be completely in bits about this show coming to an end. But because Ragnar's story is, has been told now and it's come to an end, it's like, I don't know, I, I feel like the real show Vikings that I fell in love with started and ended with Ragnar, you know? And everything that's happened since, like, of course, like, the rest of season four was the revenge. So it was great seeing that, seeing the aftermath and, and the fallout of Ragnar's death. But season five, to me, has been, like, a bonus season. It's it's extra. It's like, well, what happens next type of thing. You know what I mean? And I've loved it. Absolutely loved it. But, like I said, to me, the show Vikings that I fell in love with started and ended with Ragnar. You know? So, like I said, like even though I am sad that it's coming to an end, strangely enough, I'm kind of okay with it. If that makes any sense, you know? Um, plus there's talk about spin-off shows and stuff like, 
I'm sure everyone's got their own ideas of, of what it's going to be. Um, I've been told it's going to be a story focused on either. I've also been told it's going to be a spin-off series focused on Beyond. Like, I personally wouldn't say no to bringing Travis back as Ragnar. You know what I mean? Go back to, like, just after the defeat in Paris where he vanishes. Because he was gone for 10 years. 10 years of untold stories of Ragnar. You know what I mean? Of, of him walking the land or something. You know, travelling Europe. or Like, I would be willing to watch that. So I say, bring back Travis Fimmel, shave his head, stick a beard on him. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> the untold stories of Ragnar. Yeah, man. That could be the spin-off. Just call it Ragnar. <laughs> if you don't do it, it's, it's a complete mistake as far as I'm concerned. Because of how popular Ragnar is. You know, does Ragnar just walk in the land of Europe? You know, just traveling around and I don't know, man. Um, okay, we're gonna get into this episode seventeen. Whew, let's do this, man. What is he up? Head referee Jerry. Look, he's alive. He's come back to us. It was so sudden, Alfred. He. One moment he was well, and then he collapsed. It was terrible. <sighs> really don't like her, man. I'm disliking her more and more, man. I've never really liked her. She's never been like one of my favourite characters, but yeah, I've never hated her. But I'm more like disliking her more and more. Hail and farewell, my brother. Hail and farewell. Man, whole thing is so fucked. But Alfred's smart, like, maybe he might think that there's some type of foul play, like something, you know? But how can a young man like that just drop dead, you know what I mean? You have saved us. You had no cause to do it, but you have done it. Floki was right. We have all changed. Wow, okay. Okay. I'm glad because, like, Floki just wants peace there. He wants everyone, like, living together and being happy and no more drama, man. Come on. <laughs> you are all welcome to the team. To the team. It is important to us that everyone here feels involved in the life of our great town. Kattegat is grown. It is now a huge trading station. The greatest trading station in Scandinavia. Kattegat has changed since my father's time. My father gave me this responsibility. And our father, Oti, gave me this responsibility. I've accepted it, and I ask you to trust me. So, we have to change the rules. Wow, okay. Setting the tone and the mood with the lights and everything. I like that. But of course, they are the enemy. They want to destroy our kingdom. They want to encourage our enemies to attack us and invade us. Is that what you want? No! Do you want me to protect you? Yes! Do you want me to destroy them? Yes! 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 Stairs, man. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> it's not been easy since he fell sick. I had to deal with the traitors. They were still plotting against you. Yeah, she dealt with them. Fucking hell. I had to deal with your brother. My brother. Is she gonna confess? He confessed. And then he said he would never plot against you again, but I satisfied myself he was lying. I knew. As long as he was alive, he would do anything. Join any plot, any conspiracy that promised to make him king. You don't know that, right? 
so fucked up, man. You are behaving as if you were an ordinary person. You grieve as if you were an ordinary person. You show your feelings as if you were an ordinary person. But all of that must stop. The king cannot be like an ordinary person. Must not behave or have feelings like an ordinary person. A king must be prepared to do the most terrible things. Things against all conscience. Like killing his own mum. He wants to survive. Because she killed his brother. Kind of setting yourself up there, Judith. <laughs> You're setting yourself up there. Because generally people, like, they have love for their parents and shit, you know what I mean? But, like, you're basically saying, like, you can't be a normal person, you're a king. you got to be the be willing to do the most terrible things. Could he have it executed? I fear you are a god. And a merciful god will always be more popular among the common people than a vengeful god, like Odin. Wouldn't you rather be loved than feared? No. <laughs> Why aren't you getting ready? We have to leave. Yes, Loki. We are ready. Come on, you old witch. What? What? Why did you say that? Because it's true. You are a witch. And the murderers. And you deserve to die! Ah! What? Don't do it, Loki! We're doing this for love! For the love of my brother and sister! No! 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 Stop this now! What in the actual fuck? Don't touch her! She never killed anyone! No! Shut this! Please! What in the fuck, man? Edge! What the fuck, man? Asleker! I should have known you were more ambitious than me! My only ambition is revenge. That is so fucked. Just killed his whole entire family. Fuck you, Edge. And your fucked up nose. What the fuck? Floki. Sorry to startle you. <laughs> oh, Ivor. You could leave Cadiga. What? Go on a diplomatic trip to the Great Hall of King Olaf the Stout. You know, cement our alliance, help him prepare for our springtime attacks on York and Wessex. And if I refuse. I don't want to leave Kattegat. What is your name? Thora. Thora. He seems very fond of you. We love each other. Hmm. Okay. That is good. And it would be a pity if I had to burn her alive. You wouldn't do that, <laughs> brother. <laughs> No, I wouldn't. Not if you agree to leave Kattegat first thing in the morning. Hmm? Wow. Like that, you see the trail of like where his legs are like, looks like a snake tail. <laughs> like a snake trail. Cold is the ocean spray. Death is on its way, and your death is on its way. No, your head, old man. The ox is coming. So you know what's what's Floki gonna do with Edge now? Is Floki gonna have to like banish them? His group is just gonna get smaller and smaller, like. I have never done anything against Shetus. I was always more on his side than Avon's, and surely he knows that. He does not.
They're going to kill him too, aren't they? Fuck, man. You had your way. Each wow, I took his head. Day and each must die someday. Jesus. It's kind of crazy when you think about it, man. The one family that, that wanted peace turned out to be the most dangerous ones, the most savage ones. <laughs> she is a beast, man. Oh my God. And then on the life of my intended wife, Gunhild. Intended wife? She must agree and swear to the gods that once I die, you will become king. Whether or not she'll want to marry you will be of no further consequence to me. I'll be dead. But for now, King Harold, you must give the orders and start preparing your ships. Wow. Wow. What an exciting world we live in. Yep. What an exciting world. I will ride myself at the head of the army to inspire our forces. I also okay. believe that I have some good commanders. The Danes won't be frightened to see you at the head of the army. Believe me. Very well. Then what do you advise? I advise you make me the head of your army. Oh, shit. I think you should listen to me. Words are fine, but they don't win battles. Mm -hmm. If you make me the head of the army, I will find a way of dealing with the dance. Otherwise, you have no hope. Ooh. <laughs> it would be great if we still had, like, fucking Athelred to help out with battle tactics and shit. Judith fucking not thinking. Like, so stupid to me. I see that Bjorn Ironside has claimed you. You are mistaken. No man will ever claim me. Okay. I prefer to think that the gods have you and me in mind. I don't know about the gods. What do you have in mind then? Do you still want to be king of all Norway? My ambition has never changed. Well then, I should like to be queen. What did I say at the start? Like, who's she gonna want to be with? Like, wow, wow. Okay, that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy, man. Her ambition of being queen of all of Norway. Your father, your brother. They wanted revenge, <laughs> and they had planned it a long time. <laughs> no, I couldn't stop them. I can't believe wow. it. Sorry, I... sorry. <laughs> so fucked up, man. Feel for him so bad. Poor Floki, man. <laughs> and be careful. That's... She's be not careful, going. My brother. That was me. I would take her with me, keep her safe. <laughs> so... How do you know, like, oh my god, Ivan might do something to her, like. I'm afraid to ask you if you love me. You are one of the most famous men in the world. And you're afraid of me? I am alone. Alone, naked, and afraid. Wow. I respect you even more for saying that. And I will take your words and lock them away in my heart forever. See, I, I don't know what to make of her. 
is this like just a setup or does she actually love Bjorn but yet she has ambition with like Howard Finehair like or, or maybe she's just generally attracted to Bjorn and wants a bit of fun you know what I mean <laughs> I hope it's not like a, a, a plan kind of setup you know her and Howard Finehair What are you doing? Is this a vision or something? Don't. Oh, fuck me, man. Please let that be a vision. Please let that be just a vision. Fuck me, man. On Floki's storyline, everyone's dropping like flies. <laughs> oh, man. Come on. Can Floki get a fucking break? Please. It's going to end, isn't it? What the fuck, man? Like, he wants peace. He wants everyone living there, like, happiness and harmony. And, and, and like, it's just drama after drama with Floki's storyline now. I mean, it's more interesting. Don't get me wrong, because it got... It did get a little bit boring there. I'm not going to lie. Everything else just seemed so much more interesting than what was going on with Floki and everyone just sat around talking. Yeah, the question still stands, what's Floki going to do now? Is he just going to banish, like, Edge and his whole family? But then that group... His little settlement is going to just get smaller and smaller. You know what I mean? Like, is he just going to just forgive him? Carry on? Yeah, he can't really turn a blind eye to it, can he? Like, he needs to it needs to be addressed. It needs to be handled at some point. As far as uh, Goonhild, is it? Goonhild, Goonhild. I don't know where she's coming from. Like, she generally looked like she was interested in the idea of being queen of all of Norway, you know? But then the way that she was with Bjorn, like... I think it's funny how right at the start as well, I said it's like both men are acting like they have kind of a claim over, but she's got a choice in the matter, you know what I mean? And... <laughs> I don't know. Ambition is a very powerful thing. But like I said, it, it might be just pure ambition, but yet then she also might be generally in love with Bjorn. I don't know. I don't know. It's still very early days with her character. So Fitzuk... Um, Fitzuk's heading to England now. He's going to York, right? So that's how he kind of comes back together with Bjorn. Ivor, like, Ivor's just doing what he normally does and it's kind of becoming a little bit annoying, to be honest. What I loved about Ivor before was the fact that he was very layered, you know? Like, there was this very vulnerable um, side to him and, and, like, you genuinely felt sorry for him. You genuinely felt compassion for his character. And his, his, his manic, crazy moments where, where he just was so aggressive and violent in a way was kind of like a, a, a shield to protect that, that sensitive side so much. You know what I mean? Because he was so sensitive, he has to be so violent and aggressive. And I like that about Ivor. But now he just seems to be just constantly like i'm a god i'm i'm like Ugh. there's no more layers to him anymore you know and i'm sure i've said this before but i really hope with the whole fallout of uh Freddy's, like i still reckon she's gonna have a daughter because she's been telling him that he's gonna have a son um i reckon she will she'll probably have a girl or even like okay this might sound really really bad but what if she has the baby and the baby dies in, in childbirth. Like, there's complications. I don't know. There's got to be something that brings Ivor back down, you know, because he's, he's up here. Freddy's is just a snake. Like, I don't like her at all, man. <laughs> saying that, same type of thing with Judith. Like, I... I like I said, I've, I've never really liked her, but then I've never really disliked her. She's always just kind of been there, like Egbert's you know, a bit on the side. But I think the only kind of reason that I, I kind of howled her in any kind of, like, good regard, like, like was the fact that she had Atherson's son. 
And like, I'm just thinking, like, what would Egbert say to her if, if he saw what had happened? Like, if he was there now. Like, it's funny, like, I actually thought that a few times. Like, when Ivor was doing his speech and they were turning off all the lights and everything. Well, they were putting out all the, like, lanterns and the pits of fire and shit. I was thinking, like, what would Ragnar say if, if he was there now and he saw what Ivor was doing? What would Ragnar say? I could definitely see him saying, like, Ivor, you're doing it wrong. You're not meant to do it this way. You're ruling these people with fear. You're not meant to do it like that. And then with, with Judith, like, I I could see Egbert actually being... Not not necessarily angry, but I think he probably would have been um, real let down by Judith's choice to kill her, her own son. Because, of course, like I said last week, like, Athelred is a direct descendant of Egbert. Like, she literally has killed off that, that bloodline. Unless... Um, Athelred's um, wife got pregnant that, that night because there's a reason why they had him having sex. There's a reason why they actually had him having sex and not just lying in bed having like a kiss and a cuddle. They actually showed him having sex and then there was the dialogue um, in this episode about how like, oh, you've got to go pack your shit, fuck off, unless you're like carrying his son. If not, find someone else type of thing. Um, maybe she is pregnant. Maybe she'll find out in like the next episode that, that she's pregnant. And a part of me is hoping that she is. Just just so that Egbert's bloodline can continue, you know what I mean? I just can't believe her. I really can't believe her. Like, all week, I've been thinking, like, what the fuck, Judith? <laughs> what a bitch. <laughs> okay, I'm going to wrap this up, get this edited, get it up for you guys, ASAP. Yeah, give this video a thumb up if you like it. Comment down below, let me know what you think. And subscribe if you haven't already, man. All right? I've been Sif Urian. I'll catch you in the next one, man.